In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Allah and we thank Him. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own selves and from our sinful actions. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whoever goes astray, no one can lead back to the straight path except Allah, the Most High. We testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet Muhammad and upon all the Prophets. Allah the Almighty admonishes the believers repeatedly in the Quran to fear him, respect him, regard him, and to keep their duty towards him. Allah tells the believers in uh, chapter 3 of the Quran, and he says to them, O believers, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Today's topic will be about our belief in Allah. For someone to believe in the attributes of Allah and the actions of Allah, first of all, he has to, of course, believe in Allah's existence. Many people have forsaken and shunned away the belief in the creator and sustainer of this universe. They just basically disbelieve in this fact. And they claim that we can still lead a healthy, active, happy life and productive life without having to believe in the Creator or in God. To those people, a person may want to say that normally in life, we like to know what is around us. If something exists, we would want to know that it exists. If something is, if something is a superstition, we would want to know that it is a superstition. A human being is created with this curiosity always. He is always inquisitive and trying to find out what is around him. And if the existence of God is a fact of life, why shouldn't one try to at least investigate it? You know, human beings put so much effort to find out about the existence of even the smallest subatomic particles. We all hear about this collider. I think it's in Switzerland called CERN, C-E-R-N, -C -E which took about 20 years to build. And it cost close to $50 billion to build this collider, which allows scientists to do certain atomic experiments to allow them to discover the existence of certain subatomic particles. You might have heard about a subatomic particle called the Higgs uh, boson particle. This particle took researchers 40 years, 40 years trying to determine whether it exists or it doesn't exist. So wouldn't one want to, wouldn't we want to find out about the creator and sustainer of this whole universe, especially that this creator is the one who drew our attention to his existence. He is the one who already sent messengers and chose from amongst humanity certain people whom, to whom he delivered his messages, his revelations, his books, and entrusted them with the mission to go around and call people to the Creator. So Allah initiated the process of us recognizing Him. And Allah has created us in such a way that we could realize and sense His existence, even though that we do not see Him with our own eyes, but we can sense it and feel it in everything around us. We can sense it in His doings and actions and the way this universe is run by him. One of the reasons we have to consider this fact is that there's not been a single nation in history except that it believed in a superior being that brought this life to existence, actually brought the whole universe into existence and created life and created the human being and is providing for all life in this planet, all the necessary needs for it 
to flourish and to continue to exist. Without these very meticulously measured provisions and that are very finely calculated, no human being or any life would continue to exist. Everything would just cease to be. So wouldn't we want to know and find out why every nation throughout history did believe in a superior being, being? Some of them called him God, some of them called him other names. But if you look at the description that they give to this superior being that they are worshiping, it all fits what the people who believe in heavenly books like Muslims, Christians, and Jews. It all fits the description of God that is mentioned in the books of those nations that believe in heavenly books. Allah talked about this in the Quran. In chapter 35, verse 25, he says, there's not been a single nation except to which I have sent a warner, a teacher. And that would explain why every nation does have this belief in a superior being and certain rituals and uh, sacrifices or whatever they have they provide and, uh, and offerings they provide for the creator throughout history and that is something that is established that people who have studied history they've established the fact that they have found nations with different uh, that lack that are lacking schools that are lacking libraries that are lacking so many facilities but they have not find found a single nation that lacked a belief in a superior being so that is why a human being should be intrigued and his curiosity should be stimulated at least to investigate what this is all about. I will stop the talk here for a brief moment, then we will continue. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, we praise Allah and we thank Him and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own selves and from our sinful actions. We testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is His final messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet Muhammad. Allah admonishes the believers repeatedly in the Quran to fear Him, regard Him, respect Him and to keep their duty towards Him. Allah says in the chapter of Ahzab, He says, O believers, fear Allah and say only the truth. Allah will rectify your deeds for you and forgive your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a great success. One of the reasons that we should try to research and for those who don't believe in God to try to research the belief in God and for those who believe in God they should try to strengthen their belief in God. One of those reasons is that Everything we see around us is dependent on something else. Everything is lacking for something else to allow it to be created and to allow it to continue to live or to exist. For instance, we as human beings living on this earth, we need so many things. We need water to drink, we need food to eat, uh, we need a stable earth to live upon. Um, we need protection from many factors that could endanger our lives coming from outer, outer space. Uh, Allah provides this beautiful light of daylight that allows the plants to grow, allows us to see, allows us to go about our daily livings, and at the same time allows for the earth to cool at night. With this, without this perfect balance, this life could not exist. Everything requires something to bring it into existence. And that is why people sometimes make a joke and say, what is, what is first, the hen or the egg? And they can never come to an answer because the egg requires the hen to, the egg requires the hen and the hen also requires, requires the egg and so on and so on. And you can go in this cycle without the question to be answered. If you ask a human being, where did you come from? He will say from, you know, from my parents and then his parents came from their parents and so on and so on. And you can keep on going in this cycle until you have to come to an end to a human being that was created without having to come from previous parents. And you can follow everything that exists 
that you see in front of our eyes today, you try to follow the sequence of causes that led to its existence, and eventually you will come to this circular argument without an answer unless you assume that there is an independent creator that started this, this sequence of causes that led to this life to come and allows it to continue to exist. And this is why Allah describes himself in the Quran as the As-Samad, Allahu samad which means the self-sufficient, the perfect. Everything is imperfect and everything in existence needs something to fulfill it, to allow it to continue to live or to exist. But this whole universe also, we know that it came to existence at a certain point in time. And scholars and researchers can even pinpoint the, can pinpoint the life time of this universe, that it was about 14, less than 14 billion years ago, this universe was not even there, did not exist, and now it came into existence. So who brought it into existence? And every single item in this universe requires some other item to fulfill it and allow it to continue and to persist. So we need the self-sufficient, the one who started all this. And that's why Allah calls himself As-Samad, the perfect, the self-sufficient, the subs uh, subsistent. And he also calls himself Al-Awwal, the first, because he is the first cause for everything. Another reason we need to research the existence of God and strengthen our belief in God is that everything, every effect has a cause. This cause-effect relationship is a consistent relationship in everything that we deal with in this life. One time a philosopher asked a Bedouin in the desert, he says to him, do you believe in God? He said, yes, I do. Then he asked him, what is your proof? What proof do you have for the existence of God? This simple Bedouin in the desert, you know, brought the philosopher evidence from the simple observations that he sees in his daily life. And he says to him, the excrement is a proof for the existence of camels. If you see the excrement of animals, you would know that there was an animal that passed by this place before. And then he says, the tracks of footsteps in the desert is a proof of the passing by of travelers. And then he says, why is it that a sky full of stars and an earth full of pathways and seas full of wonderful creatures, why is it that those things do not point to the existence of God, the he called him the, the Al-Latif Al-Khabir, which means the incomprehensible, the wise. Allah is Al-Latif. You cannot really grasp the essence of Allah, but you can know his existence and you can know something about his actions and his attributes, but you cannot fully comprehend the essence of, of God. And that is why in the Muslim belief, uh, we are advised to ponder upon the signs of God but we can never grasp the essence of God. I say what I said and we will stop here and we will end this talk and supplicate to Allah.